In this video, we compare portable and hardwired RV electrical management systems, also known as EMS, to see if there's any significant differences between them. What we found might be surprising. An EMS system provides two basic functions, surge suppression and automatic disconnection of the RV if the voltage, current, and frequency exceed safe limits. Portable EMS systems are typically located at the power pole, while hardware EMS systems are wired into the RV, usually adjacent to the AC distribution breaker panel. We compared a Progressive Industries portable EMS PT30X to an EMS HW30C. Also, manufacturers may call their EMS systems surge suppressors, even though they have an EMS function. There are also surge suppressors that do not have the EMS function, so make sure you differentiate between the two. Typically, surge suppressors run around $100 or less, while a full-blown EMS system is around $300. The $100 units are only surge suppressors, which will handle things like lightning, while the $300 units are surge suppressors with an EMS function. The remainder of this video is about the EMS function. While there are 50 amp versions, as well as those made from other manufacturers, similar comparisons can be made as they all provide the same basic function. On my website, which I will provide a link for here, I will list all the different models and manufacturers of EMS systems and all of their characteristics. We found five advantages of hardware EMS systems over their portable versions, and we will explain these differences one by one. The first difference is accuracy. You would think that both portable and hardwired versions would perform equally well, but this is not the case. The major difference is during brownout conditions. A brownout condition is when the voltage to the RV drops below a safe level for the equipment to operate. During brownout conditions, EMS systems will disconnect the RV at 104 volts AC or less. This is a threshold voltage where damage could occur to motors and other voltage-sensitive equipment should the voltage drop any lower. The problem is that in the portable EMS, the voltage is measured at the power pole, while the hardware EMS measures the voltage at or near the RV's distribution panel. The most accurate reading for an EMS is when it is as close as possible to the load, and there can be a significant voltage difference between these two locations. To fully understand this difference, we must again refer to our old friend, the series voltage drop. I have explained this phenomenon a few times in previous videos, so I won't repeat myself here. I have published a paper on my website that explains the issue, and I encourage you to refer to that paper if you need further information. Click on the link above to go to that page. This is more of a problem with a 30 amp coach than a 50 amp coach, even if it's operated on 30 amp service. However, a 50 amp coach with a 30 amp drop cable will have the same issue. The issue is the 30 amp cable itself. A typical 30 amp drop cable will consist of 10 AWG wire, while a 50 amp drop cable will have 6 AWG wire. 6AWG is larger than 10AWG. Typically, the shortest distance of a drop cable is about 25 foot. Voltage drop calculators reveal that when you demand the full 30 amps from a 30 amp drop cord, you can expect a 1 volt loss for every 13 feet of cable. But how often do you require 30 amps? If you have a modern RV, you cannot run all of the high demand AC appliances such as the air conditioner, water heater, microwave, or electric fireplace at the same time and stay below 30 amps. So reaching the 30 amp limit is very real. And if you have to add a 25 foot extension cord, you are dropping another 2 volts. So in reality you can lose up to 4 volts AC just in your drop cord under those conditions. We do a lot of state park camping and having to use more than a 25 foot drop cord is a common thing we have to do. So why is this an issue? While 4 volts AC by itself isn't a big deal, it can be a problem in a brownout situation. If we have a hardwired EMS system and it sees less than 104 volts, it will disconnect shore power from the RV, thereby protecting it from a brownout condition. However, if we have a portable EMS system out at the power pole, 
when it sees 104 volts with a 4 volt drop along the power cord, we're at 100 volts at the RV. So we're putting our devices at increased risk because now instead of shutting down at 104 volts, it effectively shuts down at 100 volts. And for the south wire and Camco units, they disconnect below 102 volts. We could have 98 volts at the RV. This is what I mean by accuracy. And at the time you need the EMS the most, it may not disconnect power when it should. So the problem isn't with portable EMS units themselves because they use the same technology. The problem is where the voltage is measured. Difference number two, UL listing. I no longer have access to the UL library, so I really don't know what the actual differences are. But UL listing is typically safety oriented. For both progressive dynamics and the south wire versions, in both cases, the portable units were not UL listed, while the hardware units were. So if UL listing is important to you, the portable units do not have the UL listing. I could not tell for either the Hughes or the Camco version whether they were UL listed or not. They did not have it in their spec sheets. Difference number three, convenience. With a hardwired EMS, all you need to do when you arrive at the campsite is connect the RV to the power pedestal and you're done. For a portable EMS, you need to have a storage location, then connect the EMS to the power pedestal, then figure out how to waterproof the connection. While not difficult, this is just another step in the setup that needs to be completed. Difference number four, security. Obviously, a $300 EMS system plugged into a power pole is vulnerable to theft, whereas the hardwired EMS is not. You can buy a security lock for the portable EMS, but again, it's just more stuff to set up. Difference number five, operational. Some EMS systems can provide readout of voltage, current, frequency of the EMS. Monitoring voltage and current are particularly useful during brownout conditions as you can manage your power use. For example, you may have to turn off one appliance in order to turn on another, and monitoring the voltage and current is useful for this task. This is very difficult to do if the display is setting out at the power pedestal. Some hardware EMS systems do not have monitor panels or they are optional. I highly recommend an EMS system with a monitor that is easily readable while you are in an RV. The Hughes EMS systems, as well as certain portable south wire units, have Bluetooth connectivity so you can read out from your phone. This is available on both the hardware and portable system. It's almost worthless, in my view, on a portable system because you still run that same accuracy issue with the voltage drop along the cable. The accuracy and perhaps UL certification are really the two important differences when selecting an EMS. If you have a 30 amp coach, I recommend the hardwired version of the EMS unit. But if this is not possible, I recommend the following practices for portable units. Do not use more than 25 feet of drop cord if possible. Select the EMS brand having a 104 volt disconnect rather than one with a 102 volt disconnect. Minimize your electrical use during hot summer days when the park is full and everyone is running their air conditioners. Less electrical use in your RV means less voltage drop along the power cord. If you have a 50 amp coach, then both hardwired or portable systems are okay as there is much less of a voltage drop issue. However, when on 30 amp service, some RVers like using a 30 amp drop cord as it is easier to handle than the more bulky 50 amp cord. If you have a portable EMS unit, this should be avoided. The 50 amp portable EMS is not the problem. The problem, of course, is using the 30 amp drop cord, which can introduce additional voltage loss. Otherwise, follow the same recommendations as outlined for a 30 amp coach if you have a portable EMS unit and are using a 30 amp drop cord. Now, there are some disadvantages as well. Namely, you have to install it or have somebody install it for you. And also, since the hardware EMS is part of the RV, if you ever sell the RV, the EMS probably has to go with it. Hopefully, this video will allow you to make a better informed decision if you are considering the purchase of an EMS system. Visit rv-project.com.